Good morning, everyone. Good morning, classmates. Good morning to our instructor in the subject, GE9, Sir Alden Kunsing. Good morning to you. So, I am Shalami P. Kauba, and I am tasked to report the Chapter 7 of Jose Rizal, Life, Works, and Writings. Actually, guys, I am excited to share to you uh, what's with in this chapter 7 because it's so interesting to know uh, the cost the, the costumes of other places because actually our hero are uh, sharing in this chapter about the costumes of other places so let's begin chapter 7 Paris to Berlin in 1885 to 1887 so, after completing his studies in Madrid, Rizal went to Paris and Germany in order to specialize in ophthalmology. He particularly chose this branch of medicine because he wanted to cure his mother's eye ailment. He served as assistant to the famous oculist of Europe and he also continued his travels and observations of European life and customs government and laws in Paris, Heidelberg, Leipzig, and Berlin. In Berlin, guys, actually capital of then unified Germany, Jose Rizal met and befriended several top German scientists like uh, Dr. Fyodor Jagor, Dr. Adolf B. Mayer, Dr. Hans Mayer, and Dr. Rudolf Virchow. So his merits as a scientist were recognized by the eminent scientists of Europe. So in Gay Paris, 1885 to 1886, shortly after terminating his studies at the Central University of Madrid, Rizal, who was then 24 years old, already a physician, went to Paris in order to acquire more knowledge in ophthalmology. So on his way to Paris, he stopped at Barcelona to visit his friend Maximo Viola, a medical student and a member of a rich family of San Miguel Bulacan. He stayed for a week during which time he befriended Senor Eusebio Corominas, editor of the newspaper La Publicidad, and a statesman. He gave editor Corominas an article, article rather, on the Carolines question than a controversial issue for publication. So in, so, in November 1885, Rizal was living in Paris and he worked as an assistant of Dr. Louise V. Weckert in 1852 to 1906, leading French ophthalmologist from November 1885 to February 1886. He rapidly improved his knowledge of ophthalmology as revealed by his letter to his parents on January 1, 1886, with the wrote that, with respect to the study of the ailments of the eyes, he wrote, I am doing well. I know how to perform all the operations, and I only need to know what is going on inside the eye, which requires much practice. Outside of his working hours at Dr. Records Clinic, Rizal relaxed by visiting his friends, such as the family of the Pardo de Taveras, Trinidad, Felix, and Paz, Juan Luna, and Felix, who was engaged to Juan Luna. On the album of this girl, Rizal drew a series of sketches on the story of the monkey and the turtle. So Rizal spent many happy hours. He discussed with Luna, the great masters of the brush, virus problems, on art and improve his own painting techniques so here you go we have the picture there so in this slide Rizal spent many happy hours so he discussed with Luna the great master of the brush various pro problems on art and improve his own painting technique so this is one of the painting uh, the death of Cleopatra Rizal posed as an Egyptian priest so see the picture in the slide lang and then next is the blood compact he posed as Sikatuna with Trinidad Pardo de Tavera taking the role of Legaspi 
So let's go on to the Rizal as musician. Music played an important part in all Filipino reunions uh, in Barcelona, Madrid, Paris, and other cities of Europe. The Filipino contemporaries of Rizal could either play an instrument or sing. So, in a letter dated November 7, 1887, he told Enrique Late that he learned the solfegeo, the piano, and the voice culture in one month and a half. So, it's amazing to learn. Our hero is so a uh, fast learner to learn this such uh such uh, base, uh such this so it's nice to know that uh, Jose Rizal have this talent so if you could hear me sing he wrote to let Lete or Lee you would wish you were in Spain because my voice is like the braying of the asses so, by sheer determination and constant practice, Rizal came to play the flute very well. He was flutist in various impromptu reunions of Filipinos in Paris. It is said that he even composed some songs, particularly Alin, Alin Mang Lahi, Any Race, a patriotic song which asserts that any race aspires for freedom and a sad danza, La Deportation or Deportation, which he composed in the Pitan during his, during his exile. So next is the uh, inhistoric Hidalberg. Rizal reluctantly left gay Paris on, of, in, on Feb February 1, 1886 for Germany and he visited Strasbourg, capital of Alsace-Lorraine and other German border towns. On February 3, 1886, he arrived in Heidelberg, a historic city in Germany, famous for its old university and romantic surrounding. For a short time, he lived in a boarding house with some German law students. So, uh, he na begin ang iyang uh, study for law. So, one of the town churches was used one half by the Catholics and the other half by the Protestants. So, to the flowers of Heidelberg in the spring of 1886, Rizal was fascinated by the blooming flowers along the cool banks of the Necker River, and among them was his favorite flower, the light blue, uh, forget me not. The beautiful spring flowers reminded him of the blooming flowers of the garden of his home in Kalamba. In his mood of hom hom homesickness, he wrote on April 22, 1886, a fine poem, Alas Flores de Heidelberg to the Flowers of Heidelberg. So the next slide shows the poem uh, he wrote on April 22, 1886, which is the last Flores de Heidelberg. So next is with Pastor Ulmer of Wilhelmsfeld. Wilhelmsfeld. So yeah. Rizal spent a three-month summer vacation at Wilhelmsfeld, a mountainous village near, near Heidelberg. He stayed at the vicarage of a kind Protestant pastor of Dr. Karl Ulmer, who became his good friend and admirer. His pleasant personality and talents in languages and sketching endeared him to the pastor's wife, who was a good cook, and two children, Eti daughter, and the Fritz, which is his son. So delightful was his stay at Pastor Elmer home that Rizal felt the pangs of sadness when he needed his sojour on June 25, 1886. He wrote to Pastor Elmer expressing her gratitude. So this is, um, he wrote, I will read, I thank you very much once more. 
you may also receive when you are abroad the same treatment and friendship as i have found among you and if being a foreigner i can do anything for you in a foreign country i can be of some service to you in my homeland where you will always find a good friend if i do not die of course you understood me too in spite of my brown skin which to many people is yellow as if that were puzzling or absorbed. So later on, May 29, 1887, Rizal wrote from Monique or Moshen to Fried Friedrich or Fritz, son of Pastor Olmer, tell to the good Frau Pastor, your dream mama, that when I reach home, I shall write to her. I shall never forget how good she, as well as your papa, had been to me when I was an unknown stranger without friends and recommendations. I shall never forget Wilhelm's field with his hospitable parish house. So let's go on to the fifth centenary of Heidelberg University. So Rizal was fortunate to be sojourning in Heidelberg when the famous University of Heidelberg held its fifth centenary celebration on August 6, 1886. It was three days before his departure, and he was its hospitable people. The following entry on his diary dated August 6, 1886 describes the celebration of the fifth centenary of the famous University of Heidelberg. So these are the following. So on August 9, 1886, three days after the fifth centenary celebration of the University of Heidelberg, Rizal left the city. He boarded a train, visited various cities of Germany, and arrived in Leipzig on August 14, 1886. He attended some lectures at the University of, of Leipzig on history and psychology. He befriended Professor Friedrich Ratzel, a famous German historian, and Dr. Hans Mayer, German anthropologist. So in Leipzig, Rizal translated Schiller's William Tell from German into Tagalog so that Filipinos might know the story of that champion of Swiss independence. Later, he also translated into Tagalog for his nephews and nieces, Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales. So, Rizal found out that the cost of living in Leipzig was cheapest, cheapest in Europe, so that he stayed two months and a half in this German city. He corrected some chapters of his second novel and performed his daily physical exercises at the city gymnasium because of his knowledge of German Spanish, and other European languages who work as a proofreader in publisher's firm, thereby earning some money. On October 29, he left Leipzig for just then, where he met Dr. Adolf B. Meyer, director of the Anthropological and Ethnological Museum. He stayed two days in the city, and he heard mass in a Catholic church, and evidently, this must impress him very much for he wrote on his diary. So, he wrote in his diary that, Truly, I have never in my life heard a Mass whose music had greater sublimity and intonation. So, in the morning of November 1, Rizal left Dresden by train, reaching Berlin in the evening. So let's go to Rizal welcomed in Berlin's scientific circles. Rizal was enchanted by Berlin because of its scientific atmosphere and the absence of race prejudice. Prejudi prejudi 
In this city, he came in contact with great scientists and he met for the first time Dr. Theodor Jagger, celebrated German scientist, traveler, and author of Travels in the Philippines, a book which Rizal read and admired during his student days in Manila. Dr. Jagger visited the Philippines in 1859-1860 when Rizal as a boy. Before Rizal was born, rather. Sorry for the correction. In this book, published in Berlin on 1873, he foretold the downfall of Spanish rule in the Philippines and the coming of America to the Philippine shores. Rizal had a letter of introduction by Blumentritt for him. So... Dr. Jagger, in turn, introduced Rizal to Dr. Rudolf Virchow, famous German anthropologist and the later son, Dr. Hans Virchow, professor of uh, descriptive anatomy. Rizal also met Dr. Uh, w. Joes, noted German geographer, and he worked in a clinic of Dr. Carl Ernest Squigger in 1830-1905, to famous German ophthalmologist. So, Rizal became a member of the Anthropological Society, the Ethnological Society, and the Geographical Society of Berlin upon recommendation of Dr. Jagger and Dr. Mayer. His membership in the scientific societies proved that his scientific knowledge was recognized by the Europe scientists and he was the first Asian to be accorded such honor. So Dr. Virchow, who recognized Rizal's genius, invited the later to give a lecture before the Ethnographic Society of Berlin. In response to Virchow's invitation, Rizal wrote a scholarly paper in German entitled Tagalische Verkans Tagalog Metrical Art, which he read before the society in April eighty seven. April eighteen eighty seven. This paper was published by the society in the same year and it elicit, elicited favorable comments from all scientific quarters. So we have here the Rizal's life in Berlin. Rizal was not a mere student or a curious tourist. He lived in his in this famous capital of unified Germany for five reasons. So here are the five reasons. Number one, to gain further knowledge of, of ophthalmology. Number two, to further his studies of sciences of sciences and languages. Number three, to observe the economic had political political conditions of the German nation. Number four, to associate with famous German scientists and scholars. And the last one reason of result is to publish his novel, Nole Metanger. Rizal kept himself in physical trim by daily exercises and practiced speaking German, French, and Italian. I wanted to master French so that he may be able to write it as well as in Spanish. He took private lessons under the professor of French, Madame Lochesserdol, Le- Le- in order to master the idiomatic uh, intercas- intercases of the French language. Aside from perfecting his academic studies, he performed daily exercises in a Berlin gymnasium to develop his body. Rizal made sketches of the things he saw. He enjoyed uh, promenading along Unter den Linden, the most popular boulevard of Berlin, sipping beer in the city's inns and taking with the friendly Berliners. So let's go on to the result on German women. One of his important letters written while he was in Germany was that addressed to his sister Trinidad dated March 11, 1886, that in this letter 
Rizal expressed his high regard and admiration for German womanhood. Rizal regretted that in the Philippines that the women are more interested in how they dress than how much they know. He praised, however, the delicacy of feeling, the fine manners, devotion, and hospitality of the Filipino women, especially those in the provinces who are not yet sophisticated. If only they can cultivate their intellect by education and by taking more interest in worldly affairs, remark Rizal, they can command the respect of all men. Rizal advises uh, sister Trinidad. He said, Now that you are still young, you should strive to read, read, and learn. You must not allow yourself to be conquered by indolence because it costs so little to cast it off. So, next is the German customs. Rizal admire, admired the German customs, which he observed well. It must be noted that he was a keen observer of the customs of the peoples in all the countries he visited. So that is his message for the German customs. On Christmas Eve, the people take from the bushes in pine tree, selecting one which must not only be straight but also must have leaves that do not fall in spring. I mean that dry leaves at all in this particular case, but are a kind of small needle. It is adorned with lanterns, papers, lights, dolls, candies, fruits, and etc. And shown at night to the children who had not seen it being prepared around the tree made by the family of servants. Self-introduction. He also observed this one. And this is also uh, one of the customs of the German, the self-introduction to strangers in a social gathering. In Germany, when a man attends a social function and finds that there is nobody to introduce him to the other guest, he bows his head to the guest, introduces himself, and shakes the hands of everyone in, in the room. According to the German code of etiquette, it is bad manners for a guest to remain aloof and wait for his ho host or hostess to make the, pe the proper introduction. So next is the Rizal's darkest winter. Rizal spent winters in many temper temperate countries. The winter of 1886 in Berlin was his darkest winter. The diamond ring which his sister Saturnina gave him was in the pawn shop, and that daily meal consisted of bread and water or some cheap vegetable soup. And also, he could not pay his landlord. He had to scream, eating only one meal a day. And that daily meal consisted of bread and water or some cheap vegetable soup. His clothes were old and threadbare. He washed them himself because he could not afford to pay the, the laundry. So, out in a faraway Kalamba, Parshano tried desperately to raise money. He knew his younger brother was in a dire uh, financial situation in Berlin, but the crops had failed due to, to the, riv to the uh, ravages of the locust. The sugar market collapsed and time was off the essence, but poor Pashano was delayed in raising necessary funds. Meanwhile, Rizal starved in Berlin and shivered with wintry cold. His health broke down due to lack of proper nourishment, and he began to cough, and he feared that he was going to be sick with tuberculosis and never had he suffered such physical blows of penury, so that his soul cried out in despair. So that would be all. Thank you. That is all about the chapter 7, uh, Paris to Berlin in 1885 to, to 1887. That would be all. Thank you.